Hello. Does it look like that? Facebook Live has started. Looks like we might have started. Excellent. Hello and welcome to uh, Edible York's uh, Facebook Live uh, on seed planting. Um, so today we're going to have a look at a number of different things. So we've got a few seeds to plant, but we've also got some things that we planted earlier on that we're going to pot on. Um, some little seedlings and plants as well. So the things that we're going to be uh, planting as new seeds today are um, we've got some more herbs. We've got some chives to take a look at uh, planting those. And we're going to plant something a little bit similar. So um, similar looking seeds uh, for spring onions. So both of those two can um, go in a pot outside um, your door or they can go on a windowsill. It's, it's up to you. Um, and spring onions you could plant in a single pot or you could plant in one of those long, longer planters. Um, or they could go in the ground. So mostly the instructions for those probably say put them in, a, in the ground in the seed bed, but they're absolutely fine in a pot. So uh, we're going to take a look at uh, those. We've also got some, um, some of my seedlings from earlier on that definitely need to come out of that little tub. And uh, we've got some of our edible seeds, uh, edible flowers rather, that uh, we planted a little while ago and a few herbs to check up on. So let's start off with the, um, the seeds for both chives and spring onions. Um, I'm going to start off with the chives. So um, a, uh, a nice smallish pot is fine for those. And um, chives are great because they come back year after year. So um, if we look after these, we can keep snipping them, adding them to um, our salads and to our uh, sandwiches and things. And uh, they'll die back a little bit over winter if they're outside. But um, basically, these are one of those um, lovely ones that you can just keep, keep going uh, just like rosemary, they'll um, grow into a, a fairly substantial root ball and they'll, um, they'll keep coming back year after year. So um, what we want to do is be able to actually use a little bit of nail that I've got to open the packet. And um, we're going to put them in the, uh, the pot here. Now I've put um, some soil in there, some compost in there so far, about that far down. And um, you want to water it just a little bit to start off with. So I've pressed it down a little bit so uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a nice bed for those seeds to sit on. And then we're going to um, put a sprinkling of these seeds into the pot there. So um, we've got little sort of uh, small onion type seeds here. They're... Um, they're slightly sort of, um, yeah, triangular kind of shaped seeds um, rather than flat ones for the, uh, the onion types. Um, so this will look similar if you've got onion seeds or if you are planting um, leeks or um, our spring onions, the seeds look fairly similar. So these ones are the chives and uh, I'm going to take my pot there and I'm just going to sprinkle them over the top there. So. Once uh, these have got growing and I've had my first um, bit of cropping on the windowsill, I'm going to want to um, have this uh, fairly spread out so that I can maybe split it into four clumps and put it in the garden later on. And then uh, I can keep coming back to those um, chives as, uh, as we go through um, the rest of the summer and then into next year. So I've sprinkled them on the top there. And then I'm going to want to cover them up with um, probably about a centimetre of compost on the top there. So uh, I'm just going to put a bit of compost on top there and sort of push it down there. And chives are reasonably hardy. You could probably put these outside and let them germinate slowly. But um, if you let them germinate inside, uh, it'll probably give them a little bit of a head start. Um, so again, like we've been saying before, um, 
they want to be reasonably um, the seeds want to be in contact with the damp so that they wake up and start germinating so what I'm probably going to do is put this in a plastic bag to uh, start them off germinating um, put it on the windowsill um, and then I'm not having to sort of check in and water it every day because it's going to keep that nice and uh, a nice humid condition while the seeds germinate and then as soon as they start poking up you can take that plastic bag off and uh, they'll get going and they'll start producing some nice chives. So that's our first one, the chives. Now spring onions, you want a slightly bigger pot um, and you could put these in a little trough if you want as well um, and I'm just going to um, Put a few spring onions in here because I want to give them enough room to grow so I probably want about sort of yeah, maybe nine or ten spring onions growing in there uh, but not all the seed will always germinate and if you do get uh, more germinating and you think oh they're going to be too crowded in there you can always pull some of them out and just just eat them as uh, a very baby salad so um, I've already put my compost in there. It's about yo far down and I've pressed it down a bit and I've already watered this one. And again, I'm going to uh, get my spring onion seeds out there. Again, you'll see they're pretty similar to the previous ones. We've got sort of little slightly triangular oniony type seeds um, here. And I'm going to kind of do three rows inside here for my uh, spring onions. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle them on the top there and uh, hoping for sort of you know, nine or ten spring onions in that little pot and uh, just tap those seeds down so that they're definitely in contact with the damp soil. Or damp compost. So once we've got those in there we can again cover them with a bit of compost and get those going and again I tend to just press the soil down the compost down on top of those seeds so that they're in contact with the the damp compost and they start sort of swelling up that dry seed and um, start getting ready to germinate and uh, come out Grow you some spring onions. So, um, so those two are our new seeds for uh, today. Um, but I've also got um, some things that uh, we've been growing on in previous weeks that we're going to um, check up on. So the first ones are uh, actually my uh, slightly later cucumbers and. Um, courgettes that I planted off uh, in one of the first weeks, so about five weeks ago. And um, the first couple of seeds came up really quickly and I planted those on. And then these two seeds germinated slightly later on. So um, not everything always turns out uh, as you expect. But these are looking very healthy now. I just left them in the pot to see whether they germinate and they've come through for me. So both of those two need to go into a bigger pot um, and I'm going to um, just ease them out of that initial tub and put them into um, a pot here that I've prepared. Again, I've put a bit of compost in to start off with, but I've not filled it up as full because we want to take most of the compost that they're already growing in. So that root ball is still intact and then just plant it in a little bit deeper into this pot. So what I've done with this one is I've just sort of pushed the compost away so there's a, a hole in the middle where I can put my cucumber. So here's my uh, little pot, cucumber market more there is uh, the one on this side. Uh, I'm just going to ease it out. Now this one it's going to come out fairly easily because I've damped the soil so that um, it's going to be reasonably easy to take out. And I've just pulled apart the two lots of roots. So I've teased those apart. You can see the roots are starting to um, 
to grow up against the edge of the pot there. So it definitely needed potting into something bigger. It's not got completely congested in there, but uh, it's going to be very much happier in a bigger pot. So um, I'm just going to drop that into the larger pot here and just firm it down a little bit and then I need to top up the compost around those roots that we saw and uh, in this case it's a cucumber it's fairly happy if we plant it slightly deeper to support that uh, that stem and uh, this cucumber is uh, is going to be sending out some tendrils fairly shortly um, you'll see it's already got some uh, little sort of flower buds starting to come they tend to come at the edges where the leaf sprouts out they, they tend to send their um, their little cucumber flowers out from there and it's looking like it's just starting to do that and the other thing with cucumbers is um, they send out these tendrils so they want to climb they're a vine climbing sort of plant so if I put a, um, a stick in there to support it, then it can climb upwards and then the cucumbers can dangle off and they'll be uh, nice and supported by, the, um, by the, the stick that it's holding onto. Now you can also tie these in to the stick, but generally those little, uh, those little tendrils will come out and you can just guide them around so that they grab hold of the stick. So I've replanted that. I might have disturbed the roots a little bit, so I want to make sure that um, the compost is nice and damp so those roots are happy and they can grow out into the new compost. So reasonably damp compost, pop that on, pop it into a new pot. So that was my cucumber market more. The other one that uh, was in this tub is um, a courgette, a courgette black beauty. So um, again, I've teased it apart from the other one and I've got a uh, half filled sort of pot there ready for that one to go into. Just make a little bit of a uh, hole in there and then I can lift that courgette out again. If you have a look, you'll see a lot of the roots are starting to run along the edge of the, uh, the pot that it was in. Um, slightly limiting pot there so um, it's going to be really happy if I give it a lot more soil and compost to grow into so I'm popping that inside my slightly larger pot there and again I watered it before I took it out I'm going to uh, put it in there and then give it a little bit more compost around the side there to hold it nice and firm it down just gently into any of the gaps around where that root ball was. So there's our courgette doing quite nicely and again like the cucumbers these ones um, the leaves look fairly similar and um, these ones are uh, cucurbit and they're coming again where the leaf's branching out that's where it's growing from and it's got another leaf coming but it's also looks like it's got a little bit of a flower bud starting there as well so that's all raring to go now the reason that i'm planting it in a pot rather than putting it outside straight away is because i had a look at the weather and uh, we're due a possible frost in a few days so Things like uh, cucumbers and courgettes and indeed tomatoes um, aren't that happy with frosts. So I want to um, have that in a pot um, that's not too big that I can just grab and bring inside um, if it looks like there's going to be a frost. If it's not going to frost, then it can happily sit outside. It can go in its final grow bag or in its large pot. Um, but this smaller pot will just keep it going until we're past the risk of frost. So that's our courgette and our cucumber planted on. And they're going to be very happy. I can, uh, I can 
sit them outside most of the day and if it looks like it's going to be cold really cold overnight then i'll bring them in if they've been sat on your windowsill and you want to put them out um, into their final position keep an eye on the weather if it's not going to be really cold overnight then uh, that's all going to be good um, but we're still a little bit early for yorkshire so um, we might still get a frost so what i tend to do is harden them off i put them out in the daytime bring them in if it's going to be cold at night put them back out during the day do that for a couple of days until they're hardened off oh we've got uh, a couple of people joining us candida hello good morning candida and uh, uriel and alison excellent so um we've, uh, we've got a few people joining us on there that's great so um, I've done my chives and spring onions into pots and uh, watered those. I've potted on my courgettes and my cucumbers and I've watered those as well. Um, and the final ones that uh, are going to need to go into new pots are uh, some of our edible seeds, edible flowers that uh, I planted out um, two or three weeks ago. Now these have cracked on really well. Um, the uh, marigold, pot marigold calendula, that one, um, those seeds came up very quickly uh, and they're looking really healthy now. They could do with moving out of this small pot. Um, but next to them, I've got some pansy seeds. So little pansies, violas. Uh, those are lovely little flowers. Um, and those flowers are edible flowers as well. So both the calendula marigold and uh, the pansy seeds, both edible flowers. Now the pansies, that I'm happy for them to carry on growing in this pot. But these big calendulas um, definitely <laughs> are ready to move on to something a little bit bigger before I put them out in the garden. So again, if, uh, if you're comfortable that uh, your garden's ready and you can uh, plant these out either in pots or in the the, uh, the border, then uh, that's all fine. Um, I actually want to um, pass on a few of these to um, some friends. So I'm going to pop them up into um, some of these modules so that uh, each of those can then be planted out later on really easily. So these little um, module trays um, just help you sort of plant out multiple things and then they can each grow with their little root ball and then they're very easy to plant out when you're ready. So um, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to go and uh, create a little hole in um, the soil that I've put in already. So I've just started moving the soil aside there so that it's a little bit easier to put the seedling in. So I've made a little hole in some of those. And then I can take um, some of my marigolds from here and uh, I can just dig them out. Now we've got a couple of tools that you could use. If you've got one of these they're great. That one's sort of like a little mini trowel for digging but actually with some of the bigger ones I've actually got a gardening designated teaspoon that's uh, been kicking around for uh, quite a number of years. It's a bit of a battered teaspoon from the kitchen that uh, I've moved out to be a gardening teaspoon. Um, and I'm just going to ease out one of these from here. So I, I've watered these beforehand. And I'm just going to ease out one of those little plants there and hopefully take most of its roots with us so that uh, we're not disturbing it too much. So I've got a nice little root ball associated with that. I can uh, create a little bit of a hole to put it in, in my uh, little seed module tray, and I can push that into its little slot there. So I can do that to uh, a couple of these. Now sometimes, good example, Sometimes they come out and there's sort of two of them quite close together. So what I need to do is just kind of hold one and gently, gently tease those roots apart. Yeah, so I've got one there with its roots intact and the other ones mainly sat in the soil there. So I can 
drop that one that's in the soil into my little module and then the one that I teased apart it's got its roots showing there I'm going to be really gentle with that one to not damage the roots just make a little slot in the compost there and then just ease that in into the hole and then press it down so that one's the one we've got to be a little bit careful of if it's got some bare roots showing yeah so if you can take a whole teaspoon including the roots and some soil that's going to keep them a lot happier but sometimes you've got two of them growing right next to each other and you just have to gently tease them apart they suggest you um, tease them apart by pulling on the um, leaves here because you don't want to squash the main stem but if you damage one of the leaves it's got other leaves um, but generally just be really gentle with those and tease those roots apart so i can start planting those into separate modules so that they can grow on and then they're really easy to um, give to a friend or pop into um, your garden later on and uh, these will grow into to lovely big orange flowers these uh, these marigolds okay so that's one of our uh, final ones to look at potting on and the same sort of um, rules apply if you're potting on your tomatoes or uh, you've got a bunch of sort of uh, sunflower seeds or courgette seeds or whatever um, you can sort of do the same sort of thing you can separate them out and pot them on, into separate pots in exactly the same way just kind of teasing each plant um, apart taking its roots um, really gently and putting it into um, the next next pot so that it can grow even bigger okay so that's our um, little lot of edible seeds the other um, edible seeds that you might find um, edible flowers rather that you might find out and about in some of our seed share locations include um, these ones these are nasturtiums so um, you can get trailing or climbing nasturtiums and uh, these are lovely both the leaves themselves and the um, yellow or orange or red flowers that come with these um, all of those are edible so nasturtiums are a great um, edible flower to grow they're brilliant um, and the other couple of things i just want to uh, let you catch up on are um, some of the herbs that we planted um, a couple of weeks ago we planted some um, basil and that's now doing quite well um, two or three weeks ago and then um, about the same time actually I planted some parsley and uh, I don't always um, get parsley to germinate very well um, but I stuck with this and I kept watering it and uh, after about um, yeah it was over two weeks before the parsley started showing up but it's going away quite strongly now so um so i'm really happy about that so parsley is one of those like basil that you have to grow each year chives great sage rosemary great you can keep them going year on year but parsley and basil um they only last one year they're really an annual and um, you might get parsley growing through the winter but then it's going to try and flower and it will die back after that so you need to grow these ones each year. And then um, the last one over on, on this side was um, the lettuce that I planted last week. And um, that's done amazingly. That's, uh, that's germinated and they're up and off already just within sort of seven days. So the, uh, the mixed lettuce seeds, which are a, a sort of a red and a green and some of them are curly lettuce leaves. So um, those can grow into um, big hearted lettuces. Um, or you can crop them as you go along, just take a few leaves off them. So those mixed lettuce seeds, the parsley and the basil, and uh, some of those edible seeds should be out in our seed share locations if you want to go with those. Brilliant. Okay, so um, hopefully that's given you um, a few ideas for um, this coming up week. Um, the final one... I wanted to show you was um, how my little sunflower seeds are growing. So these 
are um, sunflower seeds that, again, are out in the seed chair locations. Um, some of these are actually uh, rescued from somebody's giant sunflower that they grew last year. So you can reuse your own um, the plants that you grow. If they produce seeds, you can plant those seeds again. You don't have to uh, go and buy new seeds all the time. So this is what the uh, little sunflower seeds look like when they first come up. Those uh, first couple of leaves, leaves are very round. And um, I've got a few too many in each, uh, each pot here, so I'm going to um, have to split those up, but I'm like, going to let them grow a little bit bigger than that before I pot them on. So sunflowers are great to grow. Um, don't keep them too damp, but um, I actually soaked these seeds overnight before I planted them, and that just kind of gets them going. Um, but a great one to grow with the kids <coughs> and uh, see how big your sunflower grows, etc. So uh, I've got a few growing there that I can plant out in the garden in two or three weeks once they've got big enough um, and uh, have some bright, happy looking sunflowers and see how tall they grow this year. So um, sunflowers are out on most of our seed chair stations as well. So do help yourself to some of those. So um, if, uh, if you've got any questions for us to post um, on our uh, video here or post on our Edible York page um, and uh, ask any questions there. Um, but we've also got a lovely community um, of people that are swapping ideas and seeds and plants over at uh, the York Edible Exchange. So it's a Facebook group where you can ask questions and you can, um, if you've ended up with um, uh, 37 tomato plants, but none of your courgettes grew, that's the ideal place to go and swap some, some seedlings with other people so that um, everybody can get growing and everybody can have, uh, have the, a range of different, uh, different plants. So if you've got loads of one thing and you haven't got something else and you want it, then Edible York, York Edible Exchange Group, sorry, is uh, the place to go to ask questions and swap any of those plants. Cool. So thank you for joining us this week, and uh, we'll see you again each Thursday morning at uh, 10 a.m. or catch up on any of our previous Facebook Lives by looking for videos on our Facebook page. Thanks a lot.